There's a lot of excitement about the Hyperion XP1 supercar that's powered by hydrogen. In an earlier piece, I talked to CEO and founder Angelo Cafenteris, but I'll point out again that Hyperion is not just a car company, it's really an energy company that's trying to unite all sorts of smaller players to create a viable network and to find more efficient production techniques. The big diss on hydrogen, of course, is that it's expensive and it's hard to produce. So I thought I would post the part of Angelo's interview where we talk about hydrogen production and that it's actually more efficient than you might think. And remember, this is a Zoom call, so audio and video quality are kind of so-so. One of the first questions that people ask is, well, hydrogen's awesome. It's the most abundant element in the universe. It doesn't occur naturally in this world. When in fact, actually, it, it does occur in many things. It bonds to a couple of things. Number one, it, it bonds to wa to uh, oxygen to create water, which you know, of course, we're made of, uh, and also bonds to carbon to create all the fuels we've been using for the last, you know, since the, the industrial revolution. So what we can do is create hydrogen very efficiently, right? So there's two ways to create hydrogen. You know, this is um, just hydrogen 101. Two ways to create hydrogen. Number one would be the most familiar to people, which is electrolysis. Many people think that's the only way to create hydrogen. It's a very exciting way to create hydrogen. It's not the most efficient way to create hydrogen, but it is convenient and it does have its benefits. So for example, electrolysis, which is, from, is creating hydrogen from water, is a process of separating hydrogen from oxygen and having both byproducts, right? Uh, after it goes through the fuel cell process, now it comes back to water. So it's a complete circle, which is a very beautiful thing. And so what the, what the way that works is um, it's going to input electricity to create that hydrogen, which, of course, is energy, right? Now, that would normally be not the greatest situation, except for we have an abundance of energy that's not being used in many different applications in this country. There's excess solar that is not being used, believe it or not. You might think that we're, we're soaking up every bit of solar that we can. We are when we need it, but many times it's there when we don't need it. So we have these huge, massive solar fields. Uh, getting all that solar uh, at the middle of the day where the sun is at its highest point. Well, we're at work at that time, so we're not you know, heavily pulling that power. What do you do with that energy? It, it, it goes away. It, it's not even captured, right? You can't capture it. Batteries, it's too expensive and it doesn't hold that much. Hydrogen can hold a huge amount of energy and store it indefinitely. It's going to be there forever, right? So what you can do is you can combine all this excess energy that's not being used and combine it with an electrolyzer, and now you have the ability to capture and permanently store that hydrogen and distribute it. And people might be saying, yeah, but solar is expensive. That's not future. It's like, well, actually, it is getting cheaper, but that's a, it's an interesting point. There's all kinds of wind also not being taken advantage of when there's not solar. And let's, let's move past that for a second and talk about other pieces of not unused energy. We have nuclear energy that currently is extremely uh, viable and not being utilized fully. And what we can do is we can use the waste heats and we can use the unused energy created from nuclear to create hydrogen. And this is actually already being uh, done. So everything I'm saying, people are like, oh, this is crazy. It's not crazy. It's happening now. It's a way to do it. We, we just need the rest of the world to wake up and say, okay, I see what hydrogen could do. I see the benefits that there are. I want to drive a hydrogen vehicle. And that's what this vehicle is supposed to do to, to get people excited about a hydrogen vehicle and then let the whole industry come together and really synchronize on on best ways to get this thing to the public now that was just electrolysis right i'm sorry for being long-winded here but i do feel like i need to sort of set the foundation of, of hydrogen uh and essentially the the other way to make hydrogen that's very efficient right is the same way that people are getting a lot of their electricity so someone's like oh i'm driving a battery powered vehicle how great am i i'm helping the environment Okay, you, you, it, it's good, it's great. Batteries technology has been a wonderful advancement, right? Reality is that electricity is coming from natural gas, being burned somewhere else, creating carbon emissions and losing huge amounts of energy. So to create electricity from natural gas, you end up losing 65% of the energy. I'll say that again, you lose 65, a lot of energy, right? Uh, by the time it gets to your home, you've even lost even more because it's, it's, it's basically going through power lines, which are acting like resistors, right? So not efficient process. What's the alternative? 
hydrogen. First off, this country has so much natural gas, we don't know what to do with it. We have like 600 years of natural gas, and we need to take advantage of that as a benefit uh, to our, us as a country. Many countries have a lot of natural gas. What you can do as a hydrogen is a process called SMR, steam methane reformation. What that means is you steam up this natural gas, this methane, it shakes up, and then it breaks apart the carbon, right? And then you're left with just the hydrogen. Now you can stockpile all and distribute it. It's very efficient process. In fact, it's like science fiction level efficiency. Basically, you only lose 10% of the energy to do that. 10% as compared to 65% losses. It's insane. When people besmirch hydrogen, it's because they don't have all the information. And unfortunately, the devil is in the details. You can charge your vehicle fast. Uh, we have this enormously long range. There are so many ways to create hydrogen efficiently. and It's quite, quite good and efficient for the environment. The lower the weight of the vehicle, the less energy it needs to move it. Direct proportional relationship. 60% more efficient than a leading battery vehicle because it's much lighter. It's so important. And it's essentially the future of energy is hydrogen and wake up to that, essentially. We're, our goal is to show them this and allow them to see that vision. Let's not forget one of the reasons why Tesla has been successful is because of the supercharger network. Toyota and Hyundai have been pursuing hydrogen powered cars for a while now, but the network is limited to California. Obviously, the infrastructure needs to be built out, and hydrogen is a great way to store excess energy produced by wind and solar at peak times. That helps even out the grid that powers our homes and businesses. Now, a reminder, I normally do high quality video production with car reviews, and the links should be showing up here, 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 and here. I highly suggest you click on one of those to see what I normally do, and subscribe. Become part of the driven community. There's a bunch of smart people here, lots of good comments. Other auto writers are jealous. I've actually had them tell me that. So sign up. All right, that's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.